this, this bearing off of another uh, pinion gear. There's a shim between here and here. All right. These shims right here are the ones that give us our preload on, the, on these bearings. So all these bearings are going to be preloaded. But the pinion depth, the back of the shim will be set to you. might notice this bearing is just like that. Right? Same bearing. We go right over there. So we, pulled, we took this off another ring gear like that one. And where's the, there's a shim that goes behind it. But you got to determine how thick that shim's supposed to be. We got the numbers for them spacers. They're like that, right? All right, you see how this is supposed to be assembled? All this paper. And everybody's working with this thing. So, see how all these things are fixed up? Like that? All right. Now, what you got is you got a, that spacer right there. Okay, 205, 106. Right? Or is that 205, 105? That's 205, 105. That spacer is going to go. I'm going to take this right here, the way it's going to go together. See how that goes perfectly in there like that? You see that one there? 205, 129. See there's a number on that? 205, 129. That's the one. This goes in from the bottom, like that right there. Then we drop that one on there, and then we take the bearing and we put it on there. And that's it. see how that's got that centered up? Is it cool or what? All right, now we're going to take that like that. Oh, we got to, got to screw this out a little bit so we can have more coming up. Right. Now we got this, this block. You might notice on our sheet over there, it gives us this block 205 110. Okay, now we're going to. Screw that block in there. And we got that like that. We're supposed to have that at an angle about like that. Now we got this tube. It's got a number on it too. 205 336, which is what we showed right here. 205 336. Put this tube in there just like that right there. Alright. What we're needing to measure, we're actually supposed to take these and put them in there, the right ones, and although. Since Ben's been through this, we don't know which one goes where. It's all over there. All right, so which one goes on which side? We're not exactly sure. We don't know anymore. All right, so anyway, we're gonna, so we torque those down. Basically, we put our bolts in here, we torque those down, and you can kind of get the idea. And what you're supposed to do, you notice what we're measuring is the distance between that gauge block and this tube. And that's going to tell us the thickness of the shim. Now, ideally, what they're wanting you to do is you want you to have a whole bunch of these. And these shims, you know, there's different thicknesses of them that you can get from your Ford perch. And you're going to go in here, and you're going to see how thick a shim that will just drag when it's in between there. That's where these torque down, and, you know, this tube is perfectly in place and all that. When you find the shim that is the perfect fit between that gauge block and this tube with that torque down, then you know what's supposed to go between that gear and that bearing. Between that gear and that bearing, this shim, the thickness of this shim is determined with this, these tools and this setup that I just did. Everybody understand what we just talked about here? I see you, your book is going to tell you the parts that you got, I mean, the tools that you got to have to assemble all this, and it even gives you a breakdown on how to put it together. But you see how that done. I'm going to pull this back out of here. Now, see, this, all this is is to gauge the thickness of your measure between here and there. That's how you do that. That's why you got to have just the right tool. You can't just stack all this mess in there with any tools that you want to. You got to use the ones that they call for for this rear end, and that's what's in that sheet. That sheet is built around this differential chunk, for, you know, this particular type. And that, when you take it back out of there, Take that, see that bearing down in there? This goes together. You fuzz up on it when it gets too close. This goes in there. Notice how that's cone shaped. Put that on there just a little ways. You stick 
that up through there. This is again is in that bearing in the bottom. Okay, once again, this little spacer right here is perfect. You may just center that up. It's gonna go like that. And then you got this one. Now, if you put all this together like this, you could actually drop it down in there like that and then screw this in from the bottom and it would work just as well. You see what I'm saying? That's the way that goes. All right. These bearings right here, once again, this crush sleeve right here is actually, well, that one there, you have to knock it loose from there to make it where you could. Keep tightening it up, and with the, the inside that brace right down in there is going to be against this side of that crush sleeve, and the other side of the crush sleeve is going to be riding against that little sh uh, shoulder there. And so the inside race is against the crush sleeve, the rollers are against their race in there, and when you continually tighten that up a little at a time, you're going to get it to where with this torque wrench here socketed onto that bolt. It's going to have to have whatever your spec is. I like this. I like for it to be about 20 inch pounds, right? Some of this stuff, I mean, you're going to actually have a little bit of a stack up there because you're going to have a certain spec for this when you, you know, just by itself. Then when you put all this together with this, with these shims, the right thickness, preloading these bearings, you're going to have a preload on those too. Then you got to measure backlash to increase backlash. You move this away from the pinion and to decrease it, you move it toward the pinion. If all this stuff is not set up right, the rear end will be really noisy. You gotta set that up the right way. Uh, once you've done a couple of them, it's, you realize it's not that big of a deal. Occasionally, though, you'll wind up with one that will smack you around, and no matter what you do, it stays noisy. Let me reiterate the fact that no matter how good these gears look, you will, may not see anything wrong with them. They can be just as noisy as heck, and there's nothing, you know, they're a matched set. You can't just grab another pinion from another rear end and slam in here with this one because it won't hardly ever work without singing like a canary. You heard them noises like that. And that pretty well concludes that lesson. Now, if anybody built this rear end without doing all of this stuff, you did not put a rear end by just putting it together so that it feels right, putting marking compound on the gears and turning it through and looking at the mark. And there are patterns that you're supposed to see on here, if it's riding sort of close to the heel and right in the middle where these come together, then it's okay anyway. Uh, most of the independent shops don't do that. Now this right here, the reason that JT, whenever he was putting that other rear end back together, or putting this one back together before, broke the shim, is he didn't have this special tool that's supposed to drive these shims back in. That's what that tool is made for, you can tell, can't you? Perfect. All right, now, grab that puller. Uh, GM and Ford do this the same way. When you're setting this thing up, you're going to determine what your backlash is going to be. You're going to take some bearings, these shims right here, you have a whole bunch of different thicknesses of these, and you're going to find something that you can just shove in there with your fingers so that there's no slop at all, right? When you shove those in there with your fingers, and let's say that you, do, you want to make more backlash, you're going to increase the thickness of the one over here and decrease the thickness of the one over here the same amount so that you're keeping the same <laughs> measurements. And so when you're through and you make sure you got your backlash set up right, you know your pinion depth is right right here typically. That pinion depth is not quite as critical. You know, it's, it's, it's fairly critical, but it's not as critical as, as this part. But the preload on those bearings is the most critical part of this whole deal and the relationship between these gears. Anyway, once you get it...